let's take a look at some of the ProForm features that have been added in BricksForge version 3.0.6. The first feature is the ability to choose a source when using the update user meta action. So here we have a form that I created to update my user profile and I've added a user meta field using jet engine and the key is just jet underscore phone which has a value. Then if you go to the form under the pro forms you can now see that under actions I've chosen update user meta and under the update user meta I've just set the source to be jet engine. And I've added all of my meta fields, including the jet engine meta field, which is for the jet underscore phone. I've put my key, which you can just do by copying the key from the phone or using the FX symbol. That allows you to pull in the form field key. And that's it. So now if we save it and we preview on the front end, You can see now this is the first name, last name. I can change all of those details. So now the first name will be David. Last name is Denedo. And let's say the phone number is just 0123456. And this is the description. Let me say just a test. Let's submit. Okay. Now it has been updated with all of the details. And if I go to the user, refresh. You can see the jet engine meta field was updated as well as the regular fields for the first name, last name, and all the other fields that I wanted to update. The second feature is query loop support for opt group within the select field. So not only can we do the query loop for the options, we can also query loop the opt group. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have a form field and I have a list of services that I want the user to be able to select, but I also want them to be able to select the services based on a location, which is a taxonomy term. So now when you see the select field, now we have the term, which is the opt group, and then we have the actual fields that we can select, which are options. So both of them are a query loop within a query loop. So that is nested query loop. Let's see how everything was done. I'll come over to my form. So let me edit with breaks. So within the form, now I've added the services, which is just a select field. I've docked in an option group. And then all you have to do is just click the use query loop. And then I've queried the terms, which you can see from the example. So this is the terms, which are locations, and they all have posts under those locations. So that's what I've just done. I've just been able to Query loop the terms, then I've added the option field into that opt group and I've query looped my posts. So these are terms, then nested posts within those terms. And that's it. You now have that support for the query loop within the opt group of your select field. Next, we have the dynamic max length count for the text area field. So let's say you want to restrict the number of characters that can be added into the text area field, you can now do that and also add the description at the bottom, which tells the user how many characters that they've added and what is left. So let's take a look. So here we have our inquiry form. You can see now we have the number of characters left. So as I type, it is dynamic. It's going to be changing all of the values dynamically. So David is a good boy and so on as we do it the moment we get to the count which was 250 then you no longer be able to add any extra character how do we do it you simply come to your form and i'll choose my text area field and all you have to do is go under the general and you just mention that you want to add a max length in characters not in words but in characters and then you want to show the max length counter so i chose that to be toggled on if you toggle it off then it disappears but when you toggle it on you can now start modifying 
how everything looks. So everything is within this max length counter. You can use the dynamic fields that have been added there. You can add any kind of text you want. Then you can style it however you want. They give you maximum freedom of how you can style it. You can put it into the text area if you want. You want to put it out of the text area. It's all up to you. You have the freedom to do everything you want. Finally, there are some cool features that have been added to live variable, which you may not be aware of, but they are cool. So let's take a look. So coming back to our form, we have a multi-step form and watch what happens as I fill the details. So the first one is the name. So David, email, I'll say info at davedenco.uk. The streets, I'll say Edgeware. Then I'll choose a service. Location, let's say Liverpool. Enquiry. This is just my enquiry. And notice what happens. We now have this billing address, which has been populated dynamically. It takes three things here. So we have a static value. We have a text value as well as a select value. So you can mix and match dynamic data into the field. So let's say I change it from Liverpool to Derby. It changes dynamically. If I change the actual streets to maybe Woodland, everything changes dynamically. And where it even gets better is, and I'll go to the next page, which is my summary page. And you can see a summary of everything. Both of them are dynamic. So both the label is dynamic and the actual text is dynamic. So the label comes from the label that is attached to the name. And then we have the value, which is whatever the user imputed. The other cool thing you may not even be aware of is, let's say for whatever reason, I didn't fill any of these details, so no name. And I go to the summary page. You can see we have a fallback value that says not specified. So if the user does not specify a value, we can add a fallback. But if the user specifies a value, then we can just retrieve the value here. So you have maximum freedom with how you want to use your details in creating your summary. This also works in the email. So when you are trying to send the email, you can use this dynamic data to pull in either the label or the value and also add a fallback in case there was no value added. So how do we do this? Let's go to the form. And all you have to do is, if you're trying to like put a live value of one form field into another form field, all you have to do is just reference the key of the form field you need. So let's say, I have a new text field and I want this text field to reference the name of my other field. I'll just come and click on the copy key. Then I'll go to my text field and on the general within the value, I'll open the double curly bracket, paste the key and close the double curly bracket. Let's save it and preview on the front end. And you see now when I put any name, so David, it automatically gets that name. If I say Josh, automatically it gets that name. Then for the fallback, let's say when a text field, which is for our summary, all you have to do is the same thing. You add the double curly bracket, paste the key, and then say at fall back equal to, then you can put your fallback value, which can also be dynamic. So I'll close the double curly bracket. And then within that quotation marks, I can now put either a static field or dynamic data. Let's try with dynamic data. So I'll say, maybe I want to display the post title if nothing is specified. So save it. And then I'll go to the front end, refresh. You see, it shows version 3.0.6 when there is no value applied for the name. But the moment I apply a value like David, it changes to David. If I delete everything, it goes back to the post title. So that is for the fallback. Then if I want to get the label of any input, let's say I want to get the label of the email, I'll just copy the key. 
Then I'll come back to my text field and I'll say, open the double curly bracket, paste the key, and I'll say, at label, close the double curly bracket, save it. And now if I go back to the front end, refresh, you can see we have that email, which is the label, and we have the key, which is the V3.0.6, which is the post title for this coverage page. The moment I change anything, so I say, David, that changes. And then the email remains the same because it's getting the label. We can't change the label on the front end. The other feature that was added is the ability to update ACPT repeater fields using the BricsForge Pro forms. I will leave a link to a video that I did previously, which you can go ahead and check out. And there are other minor updates to the Pro forms. We also have updates to the API Query Builder, which I'll be showing off in a future video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, please do leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.